Hey there, Postal here. Today we're gonna to take a look at the BVP-203. Uh, why it is a good plane, but not a great plane. And we're actually gonna talk a lot about what you need to do with the, frankly, overpowered planes that you gotta deal with at tier eight. Let's take a look. Oh, no. <laughs> Cam Invictus is on the enemy team. Um, crap. It isn't an F-94D. F-94D is one of those planes that is definitely going to be a pain in my butt. Um, don't know. He probably, had, knowing him, he's probably got his build for survivability, which could give me an advantage of at least getting the heck away. I mean, I don't know him by any means, or even her. I don't know, don't know the person. I just know, know the quality of the gameplay I'm gonna have to deal with. Uh, yeah. Anyway, we are in the BVP-203. What does that mean? We have two 30 millimeter cannons. Um, they're technically long range, like snipery type cannons, but they're not like super long range. So don't think they're like, they're not even yak kind of range on them. But they are longer than normal range. Come on, 5 HP. We can get that knocked out. And you can see they do pretty darn good damage. Damage. Now, you might look at this plane and go, man, it looks like a freaking bomber to me. Got a bomb bay door and everything on it. And you're right. Probably should have been a bomber. It flies like a ridiculously fast bomber. Meaning... It has absolutely no maneuverability. Gosh dang it, we got uh, one of our friendlies died in this sector. There we go. Looks like our uh, friendlies killed the bomber though, so we're good. Let's go ahead and get some altitude here. Uh, let's actually go to the center. The center's gonna make more sense for us. Ah, crud. Maybe. Maybe not. Oh, hello. Let's see what we can do. I don't really want to go that way because going towards the spawn point is just going to go towards a spawning pissed off F-94D. Go. This plane, more than any other plane that I fly, I need to be mindful of how close I am to the ground, all that jazz, because it just doesn't pull up. Unfortunately, I've got that I-211 behind me, and nobody's really doing anything to help me. It's kind of my own fault for assuming that somebody would do something to help me. dead here. So let's just try to shoot the ground even though I don't normally shoot the ground with this plane. We're going to see what we can do here. Is he turning? He's turning away from me. Good. How is it? Oh, that's how. No, oh, am I gonna survive this? No. Nope. I was gonna say. <laughs> totally not. Um, how is it that I don't have any support in the center? So instead of going center, I guess we're gonna try to capture this command center, which is probably where I should have gone in the first place. I thought I'd be able to capture this centerpiece, but like everything in his brother died. Like I kill stuff, stuff dies. Don't want to be defending a sector, but I'm here. It's 
especially a sector like this. I wish he was following me, but he's not, and I don't got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. So let's go capture sectors. A, B, C. We're going to lose this. Oh, well. Oh, well. Oh, well. He's defending the crap out of the center, and everything keeps going to the center. So maybe we need to send everything to the opposite sides here. Oh, my freaking word. This is like the world's most aggressive bots going on here? What kind of game am I playing? Certainly feels that way. I'm actually gonna go to the airbase to try to get some health back. I'm trying to save my IL-10 here. Did barely. Let's see what we can do. That's excellent. Okay, let's see if we can't get some health. Can we get some health? We need to get everybody else over there. Oh, it's on fire. I can't even get health if I wanted to. How freaking annoying. What a waste of time. Hmm. All right, so let's try to get the center here while we can. Okay, Ooh, watch yourself. Watch yourself, Postal. Watch yourself, buddy, watch yourself. All right. Um, That's it. No, no more dying. Um, let's see here. How thoroughly annoying. So let's see if we can't get some altitude here. Damn, damn, damn. Aircraft, fall back and regroup. We also just one of those battles where literally nothing lines up. You know, you go to the, go to the center to try to capture it. Everybody dies in there rather than you actually being able to capture it. Um, starts off with going against a, a plane that's like basically built to, to defeat your plane. And then as I'm going to different sectors to try to gain health and things of that nature, I'm just wasting time. So, eh. We did okay, all things considered. Hmm, not really fond of this map, but it is what it is. We got Marauder on the enemy team this time. A P-51H can actually be a pain in our butt if he knows what he's doing. Pilots, get ready for action. You have to assume, if you don't know the name, that they know what they're doing. Got no P-61s mucking up everything. So that's nice. That's the biggest thing that you need to be aware of when you're getting a tier seven or eight plane is that you got the potential to get just completely owned by the broken P-61. 
So be mindful of that. P61 will completely own this plane. The guns are not long enough range for you to do enough damage ahead of time uh, against the P61. P61 can out maneuver and and outspeed you. Not necessarily base speed outspeed you, but it has 60 seconds worth of boost. It will eventually catch up. Like, it's just, it's broken, right? Um, and yeah, unfortunately, you're just going to have to deal with people that really, really, really need that 80% win rate. Um, kind of thing, so just got to deal with it. Uh, until Wargaming wants to deal with it, which, you know, who knows if they'll ever deal with it, so. If you get this plane, that's the biggest thing you need to worry about, honestly. The BVP-203 is not overpowered, it just isn't. The guns aren't long enough range. The speed is good, but it's not over the top great. And so, you know, it's balanced. And unfortunately, balanced is not good if you're going against the P-61. Actually go for this guy. There we go. Doubly unfortunately, I never really realized just how short range the rear gunner is on this. This is something I gotta work on. Hey, hey Caleb, how are you? Let's see if I can't get to this, what is this, Typhoon, right? Go. ABC, always be capturing. Um, come on. I might be in trouble here. Switch to my rear gunner as quickly as possible. I'm under the impression that my Spitfire's not doing very well. Alright. So we're gonna have a, a handful of losses today. As our friendlies are not as friendly as I would want them to be. Shots in. Let's see if I can't get this guy knocked out. But my thing is, I need to be watching out to not hit the ground. Because this plane will hit the ground. Turns into like. It's just a missile. A V2 rocket that doesn't want to pull up. Come here, man. Okay, keep moving. Turn in now that he's turning. Boop. Get my boost on. Um, is there anything here that I can actually shoot? I probably should have shot this. Oh man, I am not doing very well with uh, in regards to actually taking flak. All right, all right, all right, all right. Poor cat's so sad that the door's closed. Dang it. Dang it, dang it, dang it. I wasn't able to get away from him. I actually got in front of him as I was going for the ground attacker, so I wasn't paying very good attention. And we still haven't captured that sector. Good grief. Well, I can't do anything about that. I don't have any bombs, so we've already gone over. No air to ground ordnance whatsoever. Share. So, let's go capture this sector here. 
The bombs are gonna the bombers are gonna capture that. So let's send everybody else over here. And I'm gonna come over here and try to capture this. Get some altitude. Large enemy force is attacking the command center. I couldn't decide which plane to go after, and that made me less efficient. Less effective, I should say. Be advised, a line of thunderstorms is approaching. We'll soon be unable to provide. Oh no, I was doing a nifty maneuver. You're screwing up my maneuver, man. Everybody there. We're still down. We've got three sectors. We're still down. Hmm. Man, that P-51H is just freaking owning it. Holy crap. I haven't ran into him. I guess, luckily for me. But he is completely owning everything, isn't he? Let's go knock out Caleb here really quick. So he'll stop being a... Oh, never mind. He's going the wrong way. See what we can do. Let's see if we can hit literally none of our shots. What in the F? Cool. I was gonna say, hopefully the fire will. Okay, that's the A7M, so I don't care. Doesn't have the altitude performance to do anything to me. Well, consistently. Hey, look, and Caleb came over here for us. Thank you, Caleb. Appreciate you. A7M. Oh, actually, let's get this guy. We'll get a better angle, too. A not flying into the ground angle. Ooh, I say that. Holy frickin' crap, these guys are uh, hurting everything that they see. Oh. They certainly had the better team. I mean, I think both of them, yeah, both of them got more points than I got. We'll, we'll take whatever win we can get. So the battle versus Kaim, we were able to get 14 kills, three sectors captured. Like I said, just some funky, funky RNG or something going on there. Not able to capture sectors that would normally be easy to capture. Going up against a, a pilot that's obviously really good, but also in a plane that's basically ta built to take down heavy fighters, and it's you know a tier higher, so it's a shame because we had a good uh, friendly on our team here, so we had a good team. It wasn't like uh, I was trying to carry and didn't have anybody that was worth it. Uh, that's not at all what was happening. Just didn't seem to be. <laughs> I knew I knew the game was over when I went to the airbase to get health, and the airbase wouldn't give me health because of the regenerator was on fire. I was like, all right, cool. I guess I'm not, there's just no way to win this, this battle. I need my health, so, oh well. All right, so the second battle there, we were able to get 15 kills. We had to capture five sectors and we needed to capture those five sectors or we would have lost. It's where the ABCs come in, always be capturing, right? I didn't do a whole lot of air damage, 4,000. Um, I just wasn't able to like knock out bombers and ground attackers. I didn't have time. I was killing a lot of fighters and multi-role fighters. I'm not even sure I even killed many heavy fighters. I guess I did. I killed Caleb a couple times, didn't I? Yep. But you can see enemy aircraft, seven. Air defense aircraft, eight. I was like just in the sectors trying to capture them. It's not necessarily this plane's forte, so to speak. BVP-203 really, really does prefer to go after bombers, go after ground attackers. 
your crappy maneuverability uh, is not on full display in those types of situations. We just didn't have the time for that. Having to deal with this P51H, luckily he wasn't capturing. The IL-20 certainly was, and we were, we were pretty lucky, as you saw there at the end of the game, to overcome that. So the BVP-203, I like the plane. However, keep in mind, Tier 8 right now, it's just not fun unless you've got the right planes, and there's not a lot of them. The B-29C and the P-61 are just screwing up the matchmaking. And with Wargaming's lack of attention to that, they're going to keep screwing up the matchmaking for the foreseeable future. So let's talk about those two planes and how the BVP-203 has to deal with them. Let's talk with the P-61 first, because you are going to probably see more of those out there. And unfortunately, the P-61, although it doesn't have the same airspeed, quote-unquote, as the um, BVP-203, it has a higher airspeed rating simply because, if we look here, cruise speed 352 and boost speed 548 for your 203, your boost speed is significantly less on the P61. However, however, you have significantly more boost time. So unless you have literally all of your boost ready to go in your BVP 203, it's a, the P61 is eventually going to catch up to you. So the best thought process for going against the P61 is really sending everybody for it. Use your F4 key. Make sure that you're targeting that P61, making sure that everybody else is going for it. When it's being attacked by other planes, that's when you when it's going to be your best time to attack. That being said, not always going to be able to do that. Your best course of action is always ABC, always be capturing. If you're capturing other sectors, P61 is spending time defending a sector or doing whatever they're doing, getting 20, 25,000 personal points. You can overcome them, kind of like we did in this game versus the P51H this last game and the IL-20, you're able to just outcap a P-61 because you're focused on that. Would have even, again, in the first battle against the F-94D been able to overcome that if we were more focused on capturing? So that's first and foremost against a P-61. Cap, cap, cap. Focus all your friendlies on that. And yeah, keep your fingers crossed is really what it comes down to. Furthermore, when you're capturing, make sure that you are capturing smart. And what I mean by that is capturing sectors that are going to be more relevant, capturing sectors that are going to you know, potentially help capture additional sectors. So things like air bases aren't bad, but command centers and military bases are good. Mining facilities, if you're able to kill bombers and ground attackers in a mining facility sector, you can capture mining facilities. Garrisons tend to be you know, less helpful in that kind of situation. So... Be mindful of what you are capturing, but also being smart in having a, if you've got a friendly on your team, don't go capturing the same sector with that friendly. Let them go capture whatever they're capturing and you capture a different sector and you capture two sectors. It's amazing. And instead of just capturing one, so really try to expedite that process. When you're going against a B-29C, this plane is really good about getting, uh, on taking down bombers. However, a B-29C is not your typical bomber. The gun range on the 30 millimeter cannons that we have here is long range, but they're Mark 103s. They're not super long range to the point where you'll, you're going to get like literally one salvo out before the B-29C starts attacking you back and you are going to lose. Although you've got a significant amount of survivability, even with a non-survivability build here, I have 630 hit points. Your, your 600 hit points is going to melt very quickly against the B-29C. The key to taking down a B-29C, if you're going to be attacking it directly, is attack it from directly above or directly below. More often than not, you're going to be attacking it from below. Sometimes uh, you'll run into those B-29C pilots that like to fly down low and they become a flying bunker. They're the kind of pilots that get, you know, 10 kills in a game simply because they're down low killing everything. Well, then attack it from on top. If a B-29C is like this, Directly above and directly below are going to be its blind spots, so to speak, in the game, not in real life. Um, and so you'd want to attack from, you know, attack from below. Get a couple good salvos. As you attack from below, keep flying straight up, circle back down and come back down in that kind of regard. You do not want to come up from behind and then just sit behind it. Uh, you're going to regret your life choices. Same with if you're attacking it from on top. 
attack, 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 fly right, fly right by it, and then come back. You're not going to kill a B29C in one pass. Hell, you're probably not going to kill it in two. And even three is a flip of the coin. Your, your damage output is decent, but it's not significant with the BVP203. Unfortunately, you're going to run into a lot of players that don't just go out in their B29C. They've got some sort of friendly that and then the one-off chances that they're having an issue, they've got a friendly P51H that they're in a flight with or a P61 that they're in a flight with, and then that just exacerbates the issue, right? A goal in that kind of situation, if the B29C has a friendly that's always protecting it, is you got to try to try to outcap it. Really try to just, if you're going to attack it at all, just do a zoom and boom, boom and zoom, hit it once and go. Don't, e don't even turn around and look. What you're trying to do in that situation is whittle it down, whittle it down, whittle it down, so that by the time the squall line happens, it's on low enough health that you can stick with it and actually knock it out for the rest of the match if the game's not already over by then. It's unfortunate. I've even got to talk about this. These two ridiculously overpowered planes, but it is what it is. More of my video is on, on talking about how to overcome the overpowered planes when you've got a good but, but not stellar plane in the BVP-203. So enough of that. Let's actually talk about this plane in, in a little bit more detail. I've got a few videos on this plane. It's a very fun plane, so don't let me, don't let me you know, bog it down in that regard. It might behoove you to, if you're flying your BVP-203, take out a friendly in a flight, something that's in a fighter that can clear your tail as needed, or a multi-role fighter of some sort, so that way you can work together. If you if you keep running into P61s and B29Cs, fight fire with fire if you can. Unfortunately, this doesn't quite have that fire. It does have two really, really good 30 millimeter cannons. I do like these, get them to hit, and they do chunk a chunk of damage. You've got two 15 millimeter um, cannons. I kind of think of these as almost 20 millimeter cannons. They do a decent amount of damage. They do a decent amount of crits. We got decent amount of range. And then last but not least, you've got your two machine guns. These are 13 millimeters. Think about those 50 calibers if you want to. So you've got a plethora of options here, which is really, really nice. It's not an all or nothing type setup. And that's something that I do like about German, German planes in general, typically. You do have two 13 millimeter machine guns on the, on the rear here. Unfortunately, they're pretty darn short range, as you can see. And so they're not very good at like saving you unless the plane that's attacking you is on low enough health. They're good at you know, swatting the flies away, but they're not necessarily good at swatting away birds and, and heavier items that are trying to kill you. If you've got a heavy fighter behind you, you're probably in trouble. That's why you want to maintain that speed. Maintain that speed. As far as my overall build is concerned for equipment, it's going to be a little different just because the way that the consumables and the equipment are set up on this plane. This plane really does like its speed. We talked about it already. There's a bomb bay door on here. If you look up the research on this and, and the history of it, not that it was ever a real plane, but it was built initially to be a, a bomber, a high speed bomber. Took the bombs out and made it even more high speed. So its cruise speed is relatively slow, but its boost speed is relatively high. And let's take a look at what we've got going on here. Gyroscopic sight, get my accuracy on these 30 millimeter cannons. I want them hitting, I want them hitting, I want them hitting. You saw what happened when they didn't hit and suddenly you got fighters behind you and it's like, well crap, I'm losing half my health. Because we're all in on speed here, I do have a little bit of a tweak to that. I've got the advanced reinforced skin here. I'm contemplating changing this out. The reason I've got the reinforced skin is because the wings and the tail get knocked out all the time on this plane. But to be honest, they still get knocked out all the time, even with the reinforced skin. Reinforced skin reduces cruise speed and the maximum speed with the boost activated. However, I do have that 5% um, aircraft HP. That's why I'm at 630 instead of 600. And it does increase my tail's resistance. But even with all that, I'm still finding issues with getting my wings and tail knocked out. I do remember the reason I put this on here because I was really getting my wings and tail knocked out all the time. And this is a big chunky boy. You can see just how, you know, how much area the plane is taking up. So you are gonna lose your wings and tail quite often, and I don't really know how to fix that with this plane. I've gone with the full survivability build and it still just, still gets its wings and tail knocked out. So it's like, mm, I'm probably in the future gonna be changing this to polished skin. 
In fact, if we see, right now I guess would be the time to do it. If we see what that would change here, and I'm just gonna enhance it twice really quick, and we're gonna check out the difference. I'm not gonna re-roll or reassemble or calibrate or anything like that. So we do get our, our airspeed boosted. The cruise speed and the boost speed uh, go up. The survivability goes down. Yeah, I'm just gonna stick with that. So I'm actually gonna change it out. And specifically for the reasons I just spoke of, the, the wings and tails still get knocked out. So I might as well just go faster. <laughs> like if I'm gonna get my wings and tail knocked out anyway, let's just go faster. And I am literally all in on speed. On my engine consumables, we have the upgraded engine. That's going to increase your base cruise speed and increase your acceleration without the boost. Then you've got the high speed gas turbine on here. That's going to increase your boost speed and your acceleration with the boost. Then you've got some rerolls um, or bonuses on each of these for like cooldown rate and things of that nature. So yeah, more speed, yay. Maybe that'll actually help when it comes to the uh, P61s, probably not. Anyway, gas operated action is my opinion, the way to go when it comes to the guns. But, but argument could be made for long gun barrels. Reinforced ball carriers doesn't really make sense for this particular plane and I'll explain why. Gas operated action increases the rate of fire of all your forward firing armament. So the machine guns, 15 millimeter cannons, the 30 millimeter cannons, rate of fire is going up. I've mentioned it previously, I don't typically put gas operated action on 30 millimeter cannons and above because the, the impact to that large caliber cannon that's not firing very often anyway, increasing the rate of fire of something that's slow firing, it's negligible. Increasing the rate of fire of the fast firing cannons, 23, 22, excuse me, 23, 20 millimeter and less, like these 15 millimeter cannons, is noticeable. And then increasing the rate of fire of machine guns is, is definitely noticeable because they're firing so quickly anyway. A percentage of so quickly is even better. So gas operated action on this particular plane is really good because you've got three different levels of, of armament. And so you're able to impact all three of those. I find that incredibly helpful. Long gun barrels could be an argument on this plane because your 30 millimeter cannons are reasonably ranged. They're long range, they're just not sniper range kind of kind of gun barrels. Putting long gun barrels on here could put them to that sniper range kind of kind of item. And I'm tempted to test that out, and it might be something that I test out in the future. Reinforced bolt carriers doesn't really make sense for this particular plane. Two out of your three um, guns don't really overheat very often. Your 15 millimeter cannons and your 13 millimeter machine guns, they just don't overheat very often at all. The 30 millimeter cannons do, because they're 30 millimeter cannons, but the reinforced ball carriers would only be really impacting one out of your three guns, and I don't find that as valuable. So long gun barrels could be something that I go to in the future, we will see, but gas operated action just helps all the time, all the time. As far as consumables are concerned, you'll notice there's no airframe consumable, which I find kind of weird considering how wonka do this airframe is. You'll notice we've got two different engines. So I see why they put two different engine slots. We've got the propellers, we've got the jets. But the fact that you've got two different consumables for your guns, your forward firing and your rear firing guns. Okay, I get it. So I guess no airframe consumable. Thank goodness you get engine consumables doubled up here. One for the engine cooling, which is gonna be helpful for this plane. It's not a P61, so you've got a decent amount of, of boost, but having an extra 10 seconds from time to time is certainly helpful. And then the manual engine restart, you want that for this plane. Your engines are huge. I mean, look at the size of these engines. You've got two of them back to back, but they are absolutely huge. And so they get knocked out from time to time. This plane is not the most survivable plane gets wings, tail, everything gets knocked out all the time. I've built it for survivability to keep the engines, keep the wings, keep the tail knock, uh, from getting knocked out and they still get knocked out. So it's like, you might as well embrace it. How do we embrace it? Manual engine restart. Just restart those suckers when you get the opportunity. If you happen to have the emergency version of it, probably would be one of those planes where I would actually have the emergency engine restart system. Much like the P61 who gets its engines knocked out all the time. Having the, um, the premium version of this particular restart is not a bad thing. Last but not least, I've got the first aid package on here. The plane does not catch on fire all that often. I mean, it does catch on fire, but just not all that often. And for me, the first aid package I think is, is more important. You, you wanna make sure that your forward firing 
pilot is available and accurate, you wanna make sure that your rear firing turret is available and accurate. And so being able to put those guys in, that's important. Otherwise, I've just put universal ammo for both the forward firing weapon and the turret. And it looks like we're gonna put the polished skin on here. I'm gonna recommend that to everybody that's watching the video now that might want to actually purchase this plane. Bottom line is, if you're gonna be getting this plane, know that you're getting a, a good enough plane, a fun plane. Really, I kind of consider this plane to be like a tier eight version of an ME410, because it kind of is, but hold, hold it. The difference is, at tier six, the ME410 significantly stronger than the BVP-203 as a tier eight, simply because at tier six, there's not a whole lot going on that can mess with an ME410. Yeah, an XP-54, the argument could be made, uh, things like, a, um, actually really all the, the tier six heavy fighters have a good argument for being just strong in general. In general, tier six is owned by the heavy fighters. Think of it, nothing else is really, besides the heavy fighters, nothing else is like really on the top dog kind of thing at tier six. Tier eight, there's so much going on at tier eight, and the planes, the planes that happen to be there can be a little bit overpowered, and the BVP-203 is not. At tier eight, you're transitioning from where the heavy fighters were the top dogs to where the bombers are the top dogs, and so you've kind of got this meld of some really good bombers at tier eight, not necessarily overpowered, but very good, and German, American, and Soviet bombers are all very, very good at tier eight. And you're transitioning away from the heavy fighters, but the heavy fighters tend to be really good at tier eight, especially all the good premiums that they've got in the game right now. And but you've also got things like ME two six twos. You've got J eight Ms. J eight Ms tear this this BVP two hundred three up because uh, they're really built to take it down. <clears throat> You're going to run into P fifty one Hs. P fifty one H if played right can make mincemeat of a BVP two hundred three, simply because you can set it on fire, knock out its engines. They put the engines back in, you take them back out, and you've got the airspeed to stick with them. There's a lot of planes that can be a pain in the butt at tier eight, and there's not that kind of issue at tier six. So I wanted to make that caveat to the fact that this is kind of basically an ME410 at tier eight. A fun plane, but don't expect it to be a world changing kind of, kind of plane for you. That being said, being a premium plane, it does make bank something that we haven't talked about in this at all. Uh, if I go back here, Check out the details of the last battle that I won. We were able to make 300,000 credits in the game that I won. Uh, I didn't even check the game that I lost there, but I would have assumed it'd probably be around 150 to 200,000. And so you're able to certainly bring in the credits as a tier eight premium. Just temper your expectations if you see specific enemies on the opposite side. What are your feelings on the BVP 203? I feel like I talked more about the the crappy matchmaking that uh, is available at tier eight than I did this actual plane, so I apologize. I would love to hear your opinion on this plane. It's just particularly rare. I was able to get it uh, for free a few years ago when it uh, came out, and I do not regret that. It's a very, very fun plane, but it's not for everybody. Feel free to comment down below, you know I'll respond, or feel free to hop in my Discord, you know I'll be available there too. Have a great day, everybody. Bye.